Welcome, Gemini. August 2015. I'm Didici from astrology.com.au and this is uh, your monthly forecast synopsis of what's going on in the heavens for you. Some fairly significant transits occurred this month and uh, I just wanted to firstly focus on this uh, transit of Mars in your second house of finances. Fortunately that's passing and uh, you'll start to see that uh, the full impact of that moves away from this second house of income on the 9th of August. On the 9th it moves into your third house which is a far better position for Mars in its transit. What you've also had is a, a very predominant right angle aspect to the planet Uranus from the 11th house, another uh, sign and house of finance, income, profitability for business. This can cause arguments and difficulties in trying to resolve any financial matters that you may have had. But as I just said, it's nice to know that that element is passing. So let's just put that to the side because the other big thing here is the third house of your horoscope, which has four planets there right now, Sun, Mercury, Jupiter and Venus, which has just gone into its retrograde motion. And uh, right opposite that, the full moon on the first of the month, which is the ninth house. So what we're seeing here, uh, although we've got that introduction to the month with the second house of finances standing out along with the square to Uranus, indicating some abrupt sudden changes that have may have happened there in your work, problems with friendships, problems with associates in work, all of that's passing after the ninth when Mars moves to this third house. But that third house is already activated with all these planets and that has much to do with contracts, has to do with the way you communicate, it has to do with short journeys. It also, believe it or not, has much to say about your valour or courage. And that's the strength and the purposefulness to intensely go for what it is that you want. Now, this ninth house full moon is also very telling. Ninth house is the lucky part of your horoscope, and the moon is ruling your finances. Just hang on a second to my cup of tea, I believe. Why, thank you there. That's very nice. I needed a cup of tea while I'm doing the uh, reading for Gemini. So that full moon is indicative of some great opportunities for you. And the ninth house is also to do with legal matters. It has to do with long distance travels. And in Western astrological thought, it has to do with higher education and ethics and morals. The values that you hold in a spiritual sense. The full moon placement does tend to override some of those problems that we've seen that I mentioned at the outset of your reading. Uh, although you may have had some squabbles and some bickering or some problems and some uh, tension associated with your finances, it's nice to know that this full moon brings, I believe, some good fortune to the outcome of that. Now, the other thing we see here is the planet ruling your expenses, Venus, in retrograde motion. And that's going to continue all throughout the month here up until probably the second week of September. Now, that's interesting too, because it is the ruler of the 12th house, considered a neutral house, but not so good in the third house. Again, this elevates that planet, gives it strength. It is one of the friendly planets to your sun sign. So this is excellent in terms of its... Um, effects on your general good fortune, the communication, as I said, any contracts that you're going through. And with that full moon, this is a perfect time to really go for what it is you want in the finance area of your life. So if you're looking to increase your income, contracts, um, this is the time to do it. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Didici, you know, it's, it's a retrograde Venus, or you know, if it's a retrograde Mercury, particularly, people are always funny about that. I sort of have a different view of that, and because this Venus is friendly to your star sign, 
we see it ruling the fifth house as well as that twelfth house. Fifth house has to do with your love affairs and romance, and therefore that's also going to uh, accelerate and intensify the affairs associated with that specific area. I like what I see there this month, Gemini. So I'd be, I'd be saying, look, this is a time to be confident about your relationships and to, you know, if you have to renegotiate some of the elements of those relationships, business or romantic, this is a, a perfect time to do it. Mind you, the retrogression still has its inherent quality of um, retracing your steps, you know, reflectively looking over some of the decisions you've made, maybe reappraising the relationship, how it's going. And that should be consultative, you know, you should engage your partner in that. For those of you that aren't in a relationship, this is an excellent time to travel for the purpose of meeting someone because that Venus is in the third house of travels. Now, the shift, as I see it, I said around the 8th and the 9th, we see Mercury and then uh, Mars moving out of this particular third house into your fourth house. So there'll be a very big shift from these areas into the domestic sphere uh, leading up to the middle of the month. And then another very, very big uh, transit will be the transit of Jupiter again into this fourth sector of domestic affairs, the mother and uh, one's own inner happiness and peace. So let's take a look at this, this fourth house. What can that indicate? Well, that first transit that we see is... I've got, well, Mars is not moving into the fourth house. As I said, it moves from the second house of finance to the third house of contracts and travel. But we do see that the transit of Mercury is into this fourth house. And Mercury's position here is exceptional because Virgo, your fourth house is Virgo, uh, containing Mercury, its ruler, especially leading up uh, to you know the end of the month uh, and into next month is really one of the best placements of Mercury. Mercury is the communications planet. It's your ruling planet as well. So we'd have to say this is one of the best times of the year for you in terms of you know, feeling confident intellectually, but also feeling comfortable in your own skin. Inner happiness really has more to do with life fulfillment than anything you acquire, whether it be the money we've been talking about, positions in work, relationships, finding that space within yourself that makes you feel, yep, I'm okay here, I'm happy, I'm content. That's worth a million bucks. And that's exactly what I'm seeing for you during this transit of Mercury in the fourth house. You know, there are some of the uh, aspects that are formed by this transit. I'm not going into all of that today. Maybe I should. I probably would be accused of oversimplifying this. But, you know, for each and every one of you, uh, dependent upon the time of birth and the date of birth, of course, there's going to be multiple variations and numerous variations. So I see this as a general overview of what's happening to you. So uh, for those of you who are technicians, I think you'll uh, forgive me. I'm using a little bit of astrological license here. Of course, there's no substitute for a personal reading. And uh, I'll tell you how to do that at the end of the uh, overview. So Mercury's great. Uh, in Vedic astrology or that uh, Eastern sort of astrology they say that the fourth house has a lot to do with education so let's carry that theme along if it's something you've been wanting to do you want to expand your knowledge base this is certainly the time you can do that as well um, having mercury in this specific area mercury is the planet of communication and moving through the domestic sphere means reconnecting with family understanding your roots investigating researching and communication should be good as i said because this is really a very, very prominent and positive position for your ruling planet Mercury. This is called the exaltation sign of Mercury. Exaltation meaning it lifts it up to its best position in the zodiac so that it can function in the best way it can. So all of the real goodness of your ruling planet comes out at this time. So that's why I'm saying this is really uh, a pretty, pre pretty favorable time of the year for you. The sun is the ruler of the third house, and we see that moving to this fourth house on the uh, 24th. Prior to that, uh, Jupiter moves into your fourth house. So again, this 
congestion of energy that we saw in the third house moves to this fourth house which starts to dominate your thinking and your activities so i see especially by the 24th of the month a lot of your attention is going to be in your home your mother your father your family your children your residents and how you can uh, make that the sort of satisfactory environment that you want if there's some problems associated with that clear them up now if there's not you can enhance the relationships that are go going on in that particular area very last um, transit or movement of planets from house to house is that of mercury which moves from this fourth house into the fifth house again an excellent position for romance love competition dealing with children and really uh, dealing with your inner child and finding that contentment within yourself creativity and spontaneity seem to be the next phase of your life and we'll talk about that next month when i see you again i hope and in the meantime you can check out the more detailed analysis of what's going on at astrology.com.au thanks for your time have a good one and see you soon bye bye